Hi and welcome to this topic on Metro Cluster. This is going to be a purely theoretical topic because I cannot afford a Metro Cluster to do LAN. A Metro Cluster is a zero data loss solution. What does this mean? Zero data loss means that in the case of losing a data center, you will not lose any data. Not only is the data present in the other data center, but it's also completely in sync. In the data protection module, we discussed SnapMirror, which is an asynchronous replication service. This means that you always lose data when breaking the relationship. In a Metro cluster, you don't, because the data is mirrored using SyncMirror. So if one side goes down, the data is also at the other side. Again, it is in sync. In a Metro cluster, you can have a single node uh, in both data centers, or you can have a single HA pair in both data centers, or you can have two HA pairs in each data center. So in total you can have a metro cluster of either two, four, or eight nodes. Both data centers are connected by two networks. This is important, relevant to know for the exam. A fiber channel connection for NVRAM mirroring and sync mirror, and a TCP IP, and a TCP IP connection for peering and configuration replication of the SVMs. Because if you create a storage virtual machine in one cluster, it will automatically create its replica in the other cluster. Another thing that's noticeable when you create a storage virtual machine is that the counterpart will have a different name. So the basic the basis of the name will be the same, but there will be some sort of extension which is dash MC which is added to the name. So SVM Blue will become SVM Blue dash MC at the other cluster. This configuration is replicated via the CRS RDB. Remember, this was one of the five RDBs that hold all cluster configuration information. There's two important functions in a Metro cluster that distinguish it from a high availability cluster. First, there's aggregates. Aggregates in the Metro cluster are mirrored across two data centers, which may be 300 kilometers apart maximally. In the last version of Metro Cluster, you also do not have to mirror all of the aggregates in your cluster, so you can decide to save disk space by not mirroring non-critical data. The aggregates that you do mirror will have plexes on both sides. In this picture you see that the green node has two physical stacks of drives that it has owned. These two stacks can be plexes in an aggregate. Then the red node has its own two stacks. Same story. Together these stacks can form the mirrored plexes in an aggregate. NVRAM is mirrored to the other node in the HA pair and to the other cluster in the other site. In a single node solution, obviously NVRAM cannot be mirrored locally, so then it will only be mirrored to the other cluster. When we look at the aggregate a little bit closer, we will find the following. RAID groups are still part of the plex, like in regular aggregates. So we've got the RAID groups, and each plex has its own RAID groups, and these two plexes will be mirrored. Now let's have a look at what happens in the case of problems. If one or two disks fail, then no failover is required because of the parity on the drives. If more disks fail, or if an entire shell fails, then there will still be no failover because the plex will go offline, but the data is still available at the other site, and the node will keep using the plex at the other site. If switches and bridges fail because of redundancy, you will have no problem, unless you lose all of the switches, obviously. If a node fails, then now it depends whether you have a single node, an HA pair, or two HA pairs. In the case of one HA pair, the surviving node will take over the aggregates, so all will function as normal. In case of a single node per site, then there is no HA pair, and so there cannot be a local failover. So the disks are accessible by the node on the other site. Then switchover will be automatic. So if a node failure occurs, there will be an automatic switchover if that is necessary. And if you lose an entire site, in the case of the loss of a complete data center, failover by default is a manual action. So it will not happen automatically because 
the surviving site is unable to determine what the status of the failed site is. It might just as well be a split brain situation. So you'll have to, as an administrator, make absolutely sure that the other site is really down, no longer accessible, no data available, only then should you do a failover. This failover can be activated using the Metro Cluster switchover command. First you should use the dash simulate argument to check whether all conditions uh, are met. And then, if that's the case, you can run the Metro Cluster switchover command. If you repair the broken site, then you can switch back using the switch back command. But before you do that, you will have to uh, resync all of the aggregates. So the plexus will have to be in sync before you switch back. And this syncing of the plexus can be done by the command metro cluster heal. And then in two phases, the first phase is for the aggregates and the second phase is for the root aggregates. Finally, to automatically switch uh, during a site failure, uh, you can configure that using a third uh, location. And you'd have to download the tiebreaker software, which is um, freely offered to you by NetApp. Um, so the tiebreaker always runs in a third independent location. And you can configure it in a way that you say, if there is a site failure, I would like to do an automatic failover from one location to the other location.